Hey everybody. Good morning. Happy Wednesday morning. I hope you all can see me. My um, Periscope is acting up again today. Who would have thought it? Hey, Lisa. My Periscope on my iPad is being weird and this is how I watch you guys for your comments. Let me go back out and go back in again because it's going to be hard to answer your questions if I can't see what's going on. Hello, everybody. Let's see. Let's try this again. There we go. I'm sideways on the iPad as per usual, but I know it's correct on my phone, so I don't know how you guys are seeing it. Hey, Alabama. Wow. Little known fact, I used to live in Georgia when I was a baby. My dad was stationed in the Army. But I don't really remember it, and I haven't been to the Alabama yet. Hey, Mary! So this is what we're going to work on today, A Bird of Paradise. This painting was um, uh, requested by one of you, and um, we do have a list for Watercolor Wednesday suggestions um, for curriculum or painting or whatever <laughs> you want to call it up over on my Facebook group. Um, there's a document under files for the Watercolor Wednesday broadcast. You can add your um, suggestions into the comments and we'll add it to the um, upcoming episodes. I am in, working on making some of these episodes with their accompanying PDFs, um, all of it downloadable for like $5 if you guys are interested. Um, um, on a website for the new year. So let me know if you're interested. You'd get to download a copy of the video and you'd get the PDF, which you can buy now at my Etsy shop. It's $2, but for $3 more, you would get to download a copy of the video. So that's up to you. Um, I use primarily Daniel Smith watercolors. Love them very much. This sample that I created to do the PDF with um, is done on um, hot press watercolor paper, which is very smooth. Um, we're going to use cold press today. I'm actually out of hot press and actually hot press is not my favorite anyway. So, um, you can find the link for the PDF, which includes a copy of this painting at my Etsy shop. Um, if you search Etsy for Gina B. Aaron's, I should come up, but you can find the links to all my shops at Gina B. Aaron's go to, um, contact us. I think it's on the contact us page. I don't know. I've been doing a lot of updates this morning. I've been up for a while. I've got my coffee, I've got my brushes and my paints. I need to get them wet, but I think we're ready to go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab my trusty, well-loved spray bottle. And let's just spray the paints down. I should have done this before I started broadcasting, but like I said, I've been frantically working on a lot of stuff for the new year this morning, trying to get stuff done. All right, hey, how are you? Don't re no, right? So I'm trying to remember to put my coffee way over here off to the left because I've done that before and that would be sad. <laughs> um, remember while I'm painting, if you guys have any questions, I've got the iPad right here and I can answer your questions for you. Hello. So the first thing we're going to do is take kind of a larger brush and I've got my Raphael Soft Aqua brush here, which was really expensive. <laughs> But it holds a lot of water. They're really expensive and, you know, just for beginners, I wouldn't recommend them because I think they're, you know, unless you really have unlimited funds because they're pricey. But they hold, these brushes hold a whole boatload of water, I got to tell you. I love them. They're just out of my price range. This is a fluid um, cold press watercolor block. I'll show you the cover. Um, I got this from Dick Blick, but you can get these blocks of fluid watercolor paper, I believe, at Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure about Michael's. Um, I prefer cold press because it has a, hey, good morning. The cold press has a little bit of a texture. Can you all see that? It's a little bit bumpy on the surface. Um, hot press is very, very smooth. And see, so you're seeing my, hold on, you're seeing my cable. 
Hot press is very, very smooth. Um, and there's something called rough press, which is really, really, really textured. Um, Fabriano makes a paper that's soft press. It's got a little bit of a texture, but not as much as cold press. And it's um, um, not as smooth and flat as hot press. So the only way to find out what kind of paper you're going to like is, unfortunately, try them. Wait until some of these different kinds of papers go on sale at, you know, Michael's or something. You know, buy one, get one free or something and get a couple different kinds of watercolor paper and just try them. I'm going to prop the finished painting up here so I remember what I did and hopefully don't, you know, give you guys wrong directions. So we've gotten our paper wet here. And now we're going to just lay a couple of colors on the paper. Um, and we're going to, um, sorry, there's a tweet thing coming up. Um, we're going to just lay a couple colors on the paper. We're going to let it kind of run where it may. Okay, where did I go? And we're going to, um, I'm having issues with my iPad this morning, you guys. We're going to just lay, uh, this is the green gold, Daniel Smith green gold. One of my favorite green colors. We're having connection issues this morning with Periscope. I'm not sure what's going on. Hello, Lisa. And we're going to just do kind of a, a, a background wash of color. You don't need to lay down a lot of color. You, you also don't want it to be very dark. I'm going to put a little bit of phthalo yellow green on here, which I didn't do the first time. Yeah, I love this green gold. It reminds me of the golden fluid acrylic and green gold, which I love. And this is the phthalo yellow green, which I'm going to put a little bit of. I didn't do that the first time, but um, I really like that color. I'm also going to put my favorite color. I've got to refill it soon. Cobalt teal. How do you not just love that color? You can do your wash of any colors in the sample painting and in the PDF. I believe I only use the green gold. And just let the paint flow where it may. Make sure you use colors that you know, are going to blend well together that are next to each other on the color wheel, not across from each other. That way you won't get mud. Now, before we do anything else, we need to dry it. So this will be a good time to ask me questions. Um, and this is might be a little loud for some of you. Sorry, you might want to turn the um, sound down. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's pretty, this is just a really easy way to do like a background on any painting or even a journal page. While I'm drawing, we'll talk about some stuff. So if you're a troll and you're going to be nasty, don't bother because if I don't block you, one of my peeps will. <laughs> um, I was saying at the beginning of the broadcast that I'm going to, I think, if you guys are interested, be offering up a download of these live broadcasts. Um, for like five dollars yeah no troll zone no kidding for like five dollars with the pdf from etsy so instead of just getting the pdf if you want to buy a copy of the video you can do that too painting is so much fun and relaxing and therapeutic meditative so yes you should go back to painting this is, yeah, this is just a background to give the background some color and some interest. There's lots of different ways to do this, but this is the easiest uh, way to do it. And like I said, you could use this for a journal page background and then do some doodling or inking on top of it or collage. Just be aware that this is watercolor paint, so if you choose to do something with wet media on top of it, um, then it's probably going to move a little bit. I'm lifting it up so I can see where the shiny wet spots are. There we go. Now it's dry. So what I tend to do is I tend to lift it up and, and look at it this way and look for the shiny wet spots. So now it's dry. 
And these are um, Daniel Smith watercolors, which is my preferred brand. I really love the vibrancy of colors. And um, this is just a small fraction of the colors they have. They have, I think, 238 colors. And um, this is just the, you know, I think this is 52 colors out of the 238. But look at some of the vibrancy of the colors. They, look at this opera pink. Um, the phthalo yellow green, the green gold, they have some colors made from semi-precious stones that nobody else has, like Moon Glow is one of them, Bloodstone I believe is another one, Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. These are great paints. Hey, I started out with Crayola. Use what you have, what's in your budget, what you can afford. I still use this particular paintbrush. It's one of my favorites. It's a Royal watercolor brush, very cheap. And inexpensive and I got it I think at Walmart and it came in a pack of four or five for like I think it was three bucks or something pelican are good that was my next step up from Crayola pelican uh, and talons they're both very good I still have them in my I have a large round watercolor palette I use especially when I have friends over and we're watercoloring it's on a, a big lazy Susan and the, I uncaked my Pelican and Talons watercolors and I put them in the round palette. I still use them. Hello, Anne. How are you? How are you? Okay, so now we're going to go and we're going to start painting our flowers in. And I um, downloaded a copy of a picture inspiration photo uh, from, I'll answer that question in a minute, uh, from Pinterest. Um, I created a um, file for watercolor inspiration on Pinterest so you can go to my Pinterest board and look for this photo just search for my name everywhere you search Gina B Aaron's I come up all over the dang place um, and that um, dryer is a heat embossing tool I got it at Michael's years ago they're very easy to find go to the scrapbooking department so I'm going to go with I'm going to go with sap green. You can use any of your greens. Use what you have. I don't remember what I said in the PDF, so <laughs> don't ask me because I don't know. All right, and I'm going to put in just the basic shape of my flowers. And no two times you do a painting like this is it going to come out the same. I'm using my royal brush. This is around number 16. And I'm just, I'm not really touching it very much to the paper it's barely touching the paper we're just getting the outline of our stems in with kind of a medium color paint you could use the um, green gold again with less water and more paint now I'm gonna put that's the that's one of them let's see let's put the other one in on Monday we did Bird of Paradise in acrylic. They turned out okay. It's not the best painting I've ever done. I wasn't really feeling it. I should have listened to that. You know how you have some of those days where, you know, you're just, you have an art journaling prompt or something that you need to work on and you're just not feeling it. Okay. And then there's one more. The thing I liked about this particular inspiration photo was there was an odd number of flowers and odd number is always more interesting than an even number and I always think of bird of paradise as if you look at this they're like ups upside down hockey sticks <laughs> so paint a green upside down hockey stick <laughs> and don't go too far with the dryer yeah this is sap green you could do this with green gold, and I think I did with the sample, and I, that's probably what I said in the PDF. But this is sap green, which is a little darker. It's still a yellowy green, but it's a little darker. And I tend to favor yellowy green colors anyway. Okay, so now we've got our green hockey sticks. <laughs> now that I've said that, I'm going to have trouble thinking of these as anything other than green hockey sticks. Okay, so now we're going to go in with some yellow, and I'm going to, at least to start, I'm going to start with a very yellowy, uh, lemony yellow, the Hansa yellow, to sort of map out 
our flower petals, but then I'm going to pretty quickly switch to New Gamboge because I want a little bit of that Hansa Yellow to suggest lightness and brightness, but the, in reality the petals are more orange. So we're going to be using like Hansa Yellow, New Gamboge, probably Permanent Red, a little bit of Pyrrole Orange um, to do our petals, and we'll be adding in a little bit of Prussian Blue. In the inspiration photo, there was some blue in there. So I'm going to put in, um, I'm going to start with this one up here. And you probably can barely see that. I should zoom in for you guys. There you go. Just paint some yellow lines where your petals are or where you want them to be. Bird of Paradise flowers always remind me of like a chicken's head with all the little, you know, what do you call the stuff on top of the chicken's head? Or a little kid who's having a really bad hair day. Yeah, see? Um, yeah, they're very... Oh, that's okay, Jerry. Um, you comb, that's it. The chicken's comb on top of his head. And yeah, they're very tropical flowers. So just map in sort of where the lighter you know, petals are on the flowers from whatever inspiration photo you choose. Thanks. And start with your lightest colors and work your way darker. Cause remember with watercolor. Oh yeah. See, I would love to have chickens cause I'd love the fresh eggs, but my husband, um, yeah, he said no. <laughs> He's a city boy. He's from New York. So I'm, I'm a city girl too, so in reality, I'd probably only think it was cool for like the first five seconds. <laughs> All right, so now we've got our petals mapped out in a light lemony yellow. We're going to work our way darker. Now we're going to go in with some new gamboge, and we're going to um, start to make it more orange. I know, messy, right? See, I'd have problems with the messy thing. We have a dog. He's messy enough. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going right over where I've already made the lines with the yellow and I'm laying in some new gamboge. The paint is pretty wet, so it's going to blend with the yellow that's on there. So you don't have to do too much because it's going to blend and pool where it wants. And just work with that and let it, let it go where it wants to. Yeah, I'm not too far from a lot of farms in Gilroy, and I, I have fresh produce and things delivered, so if I really want fresh eggs, I can get them delivered. I'm going to, just with the tip of my brush, I'm going to pull out the tops of these petals and make them a little bit more pointy. There we go. I'm going to take some of our new gamboge and I'm going to put a little bit of it on our stems. This yellowy orange color is a really good color to use when you want to suggest um, sunlight and brightness. Thanks! Jerry knows because she I was on um, the Facebook with her um, from my arts and parts here on on Periscope, um, I'm a little bit discombobulated because I was rushing trying to get some art business stuff done for the new year. <laughs> I got it done, woohoo! <laughs> but holy cow, I had like five minutes to spare to get on here. Okay, 
So now we're going to go in with some red. You could use any of your reds. Um, actually, I take that back. I'm going to go in with pyrrole orange first. But you could use any of your reds in this. I'm going to probably use the reddest, the best true red I have, which is permanent red. But you want a true red red. This is pyrrole orange. This is really orange. And I'm barely touching it to the flower petals. And you see I'm, I'm leaving like a broken line there. I'm okay with that. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to um, just go in with a little bit of water. I'm going to switch pretty quickly here to a, a smaller brush because now that I'm doing these petals, this brush is a little bit too big. And just, just pull, pull the paint out a little bit with just water and, and let it go where it may, kind of bring it down the stem a bit. Let's switch to a smaller brush. This is a Princeton Select round number four. Don't forget about your stems and add some of this orange to suggest sunlight on the stems of the flowers. And as you're painting the stems, be conscious of which one is in back of the other ones. You know, they're overlapping. So you want to, as you're shading them, you want to make them look like, you know, one is behind the other one. So I don't want to put like this orange all the way through because this big one is in front of it. And if you get too much water, just have a rag or paper towel handy and do some lifting. Let's do this other one. Yeah, uh, we have people coming in and out this morning. Periscope is acting funny. It was for me too this morning when I first got on. So no worries, I'll be here. And if you guys miss anything, the recording will be on YouTube for free um, within 24 hours. I'll get it on there as soon as I can. Yeah. You know, it's, they always, they always get it. Um, it always is, you know, they, it, it's really good. And then they do an update <laughs> and they mess it up again. Holy cow. So just work your way darker with darker, gradually darker and darker colors. You can always make it darker, but with watercolor, you really can't easily make it lighter. That's like their biggest, the biggest thing to remember about watercolor. And I know it's not me because I'm no longer update uploading video files to my class site. I was doing that for the lot, literally the last three days. Today is the third day. <laughs> My poor computer hasn't been off in three days. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna go in with the permanent red. And the permanent red is a really nice true, here's a scrap, it's a really nice true, true red. It's a little bit on the blue side, but I prefer that for red. So now we're gonna go in and we're gonna add some red in our paint, again, is still wet, so this is going to bleed a bit. We're okay with that. We're going to let it bleed. If we want to put some suggestive marks in somewhere and we don't want it to bleed, then you would want to let this dry first. I'm barely touching the brush to the paper in some cases. And in other cases, I'm just really pushing down and letting it go down into the water. Yeah, I hate editing video. I've spent like the last four days video editing, loading to the class site over at Udemy. Finally, like five minutes before broadcast, I got it all done. And now it's up for review. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully there won't be too many fixes. We'll see. All right. 
right, so I'm going to do the same thing to this flower that I did to the other one. I'm going to put some like red lines. I'm going to let some of the red paint bleed. The one thing I noticed about painting these um, Bird of Paradise flowers is that they're not hard and you learn a lot about blending. and color placement by, by painting them. So I definitely would probably recommend it to any of you who want to pra practice with the watercolors. I'm gonna put some red on the stem because in the inspiration photo that I found, there was some red on the stem. Now, of course, you could probably do these in a more realistic manner. I'm more of a suggestive painter and impressionist type painter in both acrylic and watercolor. So keep that in mind. Yeah, you could do this with water soluble pencils. You could let this watercolor paint dry and then you could accent what you paint over this with watercolor pencils. Um, um, you could um, add some lines with a black pen, like a Staedtler pigment liner, one of these. I need a sip of coffee, hang on. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna add blue to this. We've got orange, red, yellow, green. If I put blue in here, we're gonna get mud. So we don't want mud, so we're gonna dry it again. Yeah, you totally could do this with the Derwent Intense blocks or pencils. I prefer the Derwent Intense pencils over the blocks. In fact, I sold my blocks. There's nothing wrong with the blocks. They're just a pain in the neck to use. In my opinion, if somebody made a palette that fit the blocks, where you could just take the palette out and then use the blocks, I'd be happy. I would, would not have sold them. Hey, how are you? Okay, so now that's mostly dry. And again, you want to dry this because if you have all your primary colors on here, except for blue, and then you add blue or purple, you're going to just get brown. And you probably don't want tons of brown in your flowers if you want it to be bright and light and tropical. So now we're going to work with our blues and some purples. No mud. No, no mud. Well, sometimes you want to make mud. Sometimes you want to do mud on purpose, but you want to learn how to make mud and how to avoid making it so that when you do make it, it's on purpose and not by accident. <laughs> All right. So now let's see. Now I think I want to go with the blue. I like Prussian blue. Prussian blue is a very blue green blue. That didn't make sense, did it? Turquoisey blue. <laughs> no matter my my watercolor sets, I always like this. This is Prussian blue. It's kind of more on the turquoisey side than the cooler like um, cobalt blue or ultramarine blue. And it's one of my favorite colors. So now we're going to come in and I'm using, again, still using the round number four. Now in the inspiration photo, and we're going to add some uh, some um, blue petals. I don't know what that post was about. I have no idea if that was legit. Then somebody needs to email me after. Um, if it was a troll, go away. You'll have to email me afterwards and I'll have to look at it after the broadcast because I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm going to have to sit and look at it and I don't have time right now while I'm on the air. So we're just adding some of these blue highlights to our flowers where they were in the inspiration photo. 
I'm pushing down on some marks and just doing a fine line on others. I want it to be uneven. Nat nature's not straight and even. Yeah, I, I usually get one person a broadcast that wants to see my boobs or something and, you know, trolls. So they're usually on here somewhere and we block them as they pop up or ignore them. If you ignore them, they go away for the most part. So I'm going to add in some of these blue petals in the inspiration photo. Again, there were blue petals in the flowers. I'm not going to make them all the same length and I'm not going to give them an even brush stroke. I want them to be uneven and suggestive. And then I'm going to put some of this Prussian blue here at the base to create some shadow. And then I'm going to pull it down the stem just a bit. And I'm going to come in with some just plain water and I'm going to move the Prussian blue around a little bit. Not all of it. I want to leave some of these marks. But see how that Prussian blue mixed a little bit with some, there was some wet green there and red. And it made a little bit of a dark, almost a brown color, but I'm okay with that because it just gave that flower a little bit of a shadow that I was going to add it in in a minute anyway. So again, before we go too far and the paint dries, I'm going to come in with a little bit of water in a few places and it's going to thin out the paint and it's going to pool it and give us some suggestion of petal shapes that aren't there, shadows that aren't really there. There, That's good. I like that. I want to do it again down here. We have to do this one still. And I'm going to turn this just because I think it's easier for me to get in here. Remember, if you guys have questions, ask them. So then I'm going to come in down here to my stems and let's work on the stems a bit. I'm going to come in with, um, before we go darker, let's, um, let's add in some of our favorite green gold. And it's pretty thick right now. It's not, I haven't added a lot of water to the paint, although I do need to add a little bit more than that. But it's mostly pigment and not a lot of water. So it's pretty thick and opaque. Which is good because it's allowing me to lay it on top of that slightly darker color of the sap green and have it show up still. And now I'm going to come in with a little bit of water and blend out a little bit of it. Now I'm going to come in with um, Payne's Gray. You could use neutral tint for this. Um, both of them are very translucent. Uh, the Payne's Gray is more of a blue and the neutral tint is more of a black. Um, they're both very much more translucent than the black. Here's all three of them next to each other. These two are more interesting than just using plain black. Um, and any of you who've watched me before know my preference is the Payne's Gray. And I'm going to use this to create shadow. You could use more of the Prussian Blue too. That would work. And I'm going to just put a little bit of it right here in this stem in the back. 
Payne's Gray is one of the colors I need to add more of to my palette today. The little well is almost empty. I must use it a lot. It in the cobalt teal. There's my house phone. Can you hear that in the background? Only people who call our house phone are salespeople and my mother-in-law. We lost a few followers. I'm guessing that they either didn't want to see watercolor painting or they're having problems with the connection. All right, so I'm going to blot this a little bit because it's a little bit too much, not only too much pigment, but too much water. There we go. That's better. I'm going to add a little bit up here to the bottom of this flower, to the underneath part. I still think these Bird of Paradise flowers look like tropical hoppy, hockey sticks, but that's just me. <laughs> I'm going to have trouble thinking of them as anything but hockey sticks now. And basically that's it. You just keep going until you're happy with your flowers and then I'll show you what I did at the end I took a flat brush let's see that's too big let's see. we'll use this one I like this one this is a half inch flat this is a Princeton Neptune brush and for this part I went in with cascade green which is a dark like a Christmas tree green, this one. That was probably too much of it, but you'll see around the, um, in the sample, I added some dark to the background around the flowers just to make it a little more interesting. You don't have to do this part. It was fine without it. But these are little samples and experiments, so what's the harm in, you know, just trying it, see what happens. And then add a whole bunch of water and just let it blend into the other colors that are on the background. Remember with watercolor, you not only have to work, yeah, it's a learning experience. You not only have to work lighter to darker, um, but you have to remember that you can only do so much lifting or um, blotting. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to call it blotting, but blotting. Because um, these colors, artist, artist colors especially, they'll stain the paper. So like I could try to come in here and I can get some of this up, up, up but you'll never get all of it up because it stains the paper. The other thing you can do that I didn't do on the sample, so here's here are the two side by side. And you can see the background on this one's much more blended than this one. This one um, is didn't have as much water on it. The other thing you can do that's a lot of fun is take, um, and they dry lighter, that's exactly right. You can take a larger round brush and take a color for you. Um, this is really uh, best done with one of your warmer colors that um, really would warm up the painting, like your yellows, your oranges. Um, I'm going to use New Gamboge, which is our yellowy orange color. I'm going to use a little bit of it with a lot of water on a large round brush and do this. and just splatter it on your painting. Yes, and you can pur purchase originals and digital downloads. And I have a big stack of stuff to scan today and put in as a digital download, including this. And I, I have, it's on my list today of things to do. <laughs> and just add some splatters and interest to your painting. You can also do this with a toothbrush. A toothbrush is great. I actually have a toothbrush in my um, watercolor brush bucket. 
and then just let it dry. You could do it with blue too. You could do a combination. Just go wild and crazy with it. You know, a good blue to do this with would be the cobalt teal. Because, you know, who doesn't love a little teal on anything? I mean, look, you know, and just have some fun with it. These colors are going to dry lighter. Some of them might blend with the other paint on there that's wet, but it's going to make something that's interesting. I'm a big fan and follower of Jean Haynes. Um, if you don't know who she is, oh my God, go look her up. She's got, I think, three books. She's a watercolor teacher out of the United Kingdom, and she's fabulous. Yes, I love my toothbrush is my go-to art tool, painting tool is an old toothbrush. I have an uncle who's a dentist and all of his sons are dentists. So I got a ready access to toothbrushes. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? You can buy the PDF for this today's episode in my Etsy shop. I did do a PDF uh, that um, I created uh, from making this sample. Um, the video when it loads to YouTube will include the video footage of me working on this sample. Um, and as I said earlier in the broadcast, I do think I'm going to start offering for $5 a, a digital download of the videos with the PDF, um, for the new year. So if you're interested in something like that, let me know. And next week, I think we're working on galaxies next week, but let me look, hang on. gotta look at the file let's see um, oh no free form and expressive faces I didn't okay <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna do with that free form because we already did a faces one I thought it was pretty detailed but I guess we will do more with that. I'll do something very abstract and suggestive. If you want to suggest an upcoming episode, let me know. Um, you know, we can add it to the list. Not a problem. You can use lots of different kinds of watercolors for this. I use Daniel Smith, like I said earlier, but, you know, I also own May Mary Blue, Pelican, Talons, Van Gogh. You, any of them will work. And when do you know what this is done? When this is done? I don't know. When it goes to its forever home. I, I, I'm, you know, I, <laughs> I just tend to keep working on things until, you know, they're probably overworked. And you can see how this is, the red was wet right here. Or it got re-wet when I put the water on there and it's blending with the other colors I splattered on there. But I kind of like that. Any other questions? I'm still working on my coffee. And again, this is the one that we that I did the other day for the sample for the PDF. So I guess this afternoon I'm or tomorrow I'm creating some expressive faces because for next week <laughs> samples. I don't know. Any, if anybody has any ideas where to go with that prompt, let me know. <laughs> if you have something in particular you'd like to see about with regard to faces that I didn't cover already. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. For me, art is not about um, any distinctions between um, is it fine art, is it good, is it bad. It's really about you expressing yourself in your piece. And as long as you're happy with it, that's all that matters. If you want to get better from a fine art standpoint, great. I can help you. And there's lots of other teachers out there like Jean Haynes that can help you. But the most important thing is to have fun and express yourself in your art. Um, and th these kind of blendy, watercolory techniques, especially the one with the background, these are really great for journal pages. Um, and I could see this whole painting on a journal page and then going over the top of it with a little bit of stenciling of Punchinella maybe in the corner, doing some line work. Thanks, Anne. Um, doing some line work with a black pen 
Anything like that though that you're going to do, let this dry completely first before you do it. And just be aware of when you put like acrylic paint over this, the watercolor may reactivate and move. Oh, that's a good idea, Mary. I was pretty sure Galaxy was next, but yeah, Faces evidently. One of my admins or somebody must have been changing the schedule, but that's cool. Um, and you could also go over this with pencil, either regular color pencil or watercolor pencil over the top of this and then activate it, you know, and just keep building on the layers and you can use watercolor as your base layer to a really interesting um, journal page. I'm reading while I'm talking. Everybody loves faces. There's something about us art journalers and faces that's you know when we art journal the primary th primary thing we create is faces so i'm happy to help you all with that and there's lots of really great ways to do interesting faces in watercolor we did a few of them last time and there's you know a million different ways to do a face in watercolor and we'll do that again next week and maybe we'll bring in the watercolor pencils with the watercolor paints and we'll create some interesting faces and we'll work on expression. My faces tend to always look pensive or introspective or sad. I'm not sure why that is. I don't try to do that. That's just how they come out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have no idea. A lot of them are eyes wide open and we can do one with eyes closed. I can also show you some little tricks about doing a more masculine looking face. Although all my masculine faces look like young men, girly men. I don't know why that is. Yeah, so faces, faces, everybody loves faces. Now, Jean Haynes has a couple of really great um, lessons in her books for doing faces that are just phenomenal. And I can't say enough about her. Um, um, she's a wonderful teacher. Someday I would love to take a class with her in person. All right, and when you get that up, make sure you go into... Um, my Facebook group and post a link for all of us to the face video that you're posting. And this is a, uh, oops, here's my watercolor palette. This is the color key. I always put a close up of this in the uh, PDF. Everybody always wants to know what colors I have and it's covered in plastic so that if I, while I'm painting, I have a tendency to get it wet and sloppy. Do you see all those splatter splatter marks on there? That protects it. And I was working on a Jean Haynes assignment, and she was using specific colors. And I was working to see if I had colors in my palette that were close that I could work with, and I did. So this is the one one of the ones she was using cadmium orange. I have pyrrole orange. It's not exactly the same, but it's close. And I found if I added a little bit of yellow to it, it got pretty close. And then indigo, I have Payne's gray, um, and mixed with Prussian blue, I get I can get something that's pretty close. So I just stuck this into the back here, and I made notes on it. Daniel Smith has a 238 color sample chart you can get for I think 20 bucks or something on their website, um, DanielSmith.com, um, where you can get a little sample dot of all of their colors. I cut mine up into little cards to fit in this little book. Um, but you get an actual dot of the paint on a card and it comes in an eight and a half by 11 sheet. I know, right? Um, but you can get a sample of all of their colors and that's a really affordable price to get a sample of 238 colors. And then what you can do is if you can't afford Daniel Smith paints and you have colors on hand, you can look at, say I said I was using Pyrrole Orange, you can do a swatch of this Pyrrole Orange and compare it to what you do have to see what color you have is close. And this is a good little travel kit that you could just take with you, um, these sheets. These are enough to do a couple of, you know, small paintings or ATCs or something. These little dots go a long way. Um, Golden Quar has their Quar watercolors. They also come in a... They have some sample cards, not all of their colors. 
I love the koi. I have my koi in my travel set. And they also give you a little dot of paint and a little piece of watercolor card paper. These samples are free. I got these at my local fine art supply store. Hey! So, um, you know, sample cards are a great way to get started and they're either, either free or very cheap. And I love the Koi set. The Koi set of watercolors, I think I had the 24. I got it at Hobby Lobby. I still have it. It's in my travel art kit. I've pulled it apart and put it in one of these metal pans, but I still have it. All right, I think that's it this morning. That was quick. These didn't take very long, but they're a fun project. Bird of Paradise. The green if you only buy two Daniel Smith colors, I'd recommend the green gold and the cobalt teal. If you can add one more color, moon glow. <laughs> I love the moon glow. This is that that's the grayish purple. I started my Daniel Smith collection by buying I think two tubes at a time. Um, at my um, fine art supply store. I would just go in with like 20 bucks and I would get two tubes of paint. Um, and then I built up the collection of colors that I wanted in my palette that way. You don't, you know, you can't, there's, most of us can't go out and buy 52 tubes of fine art watercolor paint. It's just too expensive. Well, it's going to, I'll have it up on uh, Periscope, Anne, and, um, you know, if you want to, um, if you have some questions and you want to, um, do Google Hangout or something, let me know. I'm going to be on Google Hangout with Cindy and Jerry Bellini and um, Michelle Mitchell about the Facebook group and stuff tomorrow. But I'm usually but I'm usually available for Hangouts or Skypes or something with, you know, my art, my art peeps. <laughs> All right. I think that's it right now. It's 10 a.m. We're going to just chat and hang out, so you let me know if you want to be in it, and I'll, I'll let you in, Anne. And as for the rest of you, you know, if you're interested in doing sort of a, you know, Google Hangout or something with, a, you know, a bunch of you, uh, 10 of you or whatever, let me know. Not tomorrow, but we'll, we can do it a different, a different, you know, time. All right, that's it right now. Don't forget to go out today and play have some fun, take a deep breath, and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Okay? Don't get too wound up in the Christmas holiday craziness. Don't let it get to you. Thanks. And I will post this to YouTube um, within 24 hours. And um, let me know what you all think about having a free down, uh, not a free, but a uh, inexpensive download of these videotapes with the accompanying PDF. If y'all would be interested in that or not, I don't want to go to the pop bother of loading a bunch of the video to the class site if you're all not interested. So let me know. You can send me a private email or Facebook message. All right. I'll see you all later. Next week, we will be back here. Watercolor Wednesday, 10 a.m. We'll be, excuse me, we'll be working on some more faces. And if you want to make suggestions, just let me know. All right. Oh, good. I'm glad you think so, Lisa. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Bye.